why don't we try a blue background? I've not done that. I'm not sure if I want wood in this, this scape yet. I might go sort of Iwagumi. Oh, yes. I think that's looking really, really good. The female just behind and a, a mano shrimp. Look at this. They're all turning up. Well, welcome back to the vlog, guys. So about three weeks ago, I set up a dwarf cichlid aquarium, two foot aquarium, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Enjoying it so much, in fact, that I decided, why don't I do it again? You guys seem to really like it as well. It's done very well in the viewing figures, which is normally an indication that you guys like something. So yeah, let's do it again, but with a different dwarf cichlid. That's hard to say. Let's do it again with a different dwarf cichlid. Got it. So we've got a low iron glass here, guys. You don't, you don't have to use that. You can just use any, any tank. <laughs> um, it's 60 centimeters across. It's like 90 liters. I'll put all the information up on the screen here. But yeah, really nice little starting block. Block, starting tank. Really nice start. So the tank is going to be sitting in this section here, which is below the epistogramma tank that we set up. So I thought it would go really nicely to have cribs, you know, another dwarf cichlid, one below the other. This one's doing great, although it's incredibly bright right now. <laughs> there we go. That's actually what it looks like. So yeah, it's growing along really, really well. I love this tank. I love how it's going. But I think we're going to do something completely different. But like, well, not completely different. It's going to be a fish tank with plants and rocks in. So <laughs> anyway, let's just get started. So yeah, that tank has got like a white background. I want to try something different. We've got white, we've got black, we've got nothing. Why don't we try a blue background? I've not done that. Um, it might look cool, it might look rubbish. If it's not blue in the thumbnail, you know it looked rubbish and ignore this bit. <laughs> Right, there we go guys that you know what this could work i think that looks quite good so the paint i've used is called sky blue and i think it's just like wall paint it's like a tester pot i got um you might be thinking can you put wall paint on glass well clearly i have and it's stuck the thing is if you scratch it it will scratch it obviously you just got to be very careful but why should you scratch it do you know what i mean like you know the background on this tank is painted it's not scratched there's nothing there's once it's there there's no reason to scratch it is there but yeah this could work right time to put it in place and we start hardscaping it looks strange it looks odd but remember you don't get anywhere in life by playing it safe doing the same thing all the time. Such a cool little unit this, great tank, great light. It's working really well for these plants, for example. So I'm confident we're gonna get really good growth. Look at that, looks great. Right, from back here, you really can get a sense of the uh, sort of blueness. I've turned down the exposure, so everything else around us looks dark, but that's because that light is shining right on that blue at the moment. But I think this is gonna look really, really cool. Like I say, you gotta give it a go. Right, first of all, let's start getting our base layer in. That's a good base layer, so it's not going to look anything like this. It's not even going to be this colour, although that does look a lot like a beach, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be different, but I want to use this to create the height. And also, it's really good to plant into as well. So we've got the nutrients underneath. They're sort of locked down by the sand. And then on top of that now, we can put a hardscape, decorative sands, pieces of wood if we want that, that sort of thing. I'm not sure if I want wood in this, this scape yet. I might go sort of Iwagumi. I don't think I've got a proper looking one anywhere, actually, so it might be worth a try. I'll see how it looks, maybe add some wood if I want to. Yeah, just see how it goes.
Oh yes, I think that's looking really, really good. So I've got the valley in the middle and the idea being that I've got some quite nice overhangs at the sides here. So they'll create their own little sort of caves. I noticed when I saw the fish in the shop before, because that's what made me want to get them and make this video, make this tank, is I saw them in the shop and they're amazing. And I saw them going in corners like this and sort of digging out the sand with their bodies to create sort of their own caves. Many people say you need to put a cave in to make sure that they breed, but these guys are breeding in the shop right now and they're they're making their own caves. So I'm gonna give them the opportunity to do that. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I don't put too much substrate in these areas in the foreground here and under this section and make sure that um, there's plenty of room in there. I'm gonna be capping all this with some nice decorative gray stone. I've never used it before. I think it will go really, really good with the Siriu stone. So as many of you would have seen already, above this tank, I've got the Epistogramma tank, which is what I said at the start of the video. But it's a really good example of how well this size tank can work for these sort of species specific styles. I don't really know what to call it. What I'm trying to achieve with these smaller tanks is to try and get some breeding going and also so that I can concentrate more on the feature fish. So like in the top one is the Epistogrammas and this one's gonna be the Crebensis, but obviously we've got the cleanup crew and other interesting fish around them. So far in the top aquarium, the Epistogramma one, everything's going great. I've not had any problems at all. And um, they appear to be doing what I said and using little crevices that, to make out little caves or something. Something's going on because they keep going into the same areas quite regularly. I'm not seeing any aggression, which would sort of be a sign that they're going into breeding mode but so far everything seems to be like one really good utopian society <laughs> yeah here we go look so everything is spot on in terms of plant growth plants are really how look at that sword in the middle there and the redness coming through and all the <laughs> and all the ludwigia palustrius super red oh it's beautiful again you can see the uh the, the leaves at the bottom there, the big leaves are the ones that were grown out of water. And then when I've planted it, is that top section it looks so good, didn't it? So we've got all the auto sinkless just chilling. <laughs> oh, hello. Here's our male epistogramma. He's coming to set. And there's the female just behind, and a mano shrimp. Look at this, they're all turning up. It's quite early in the morning, so it's like the first time they've seen me. And they're probably expecting some food right now. But it isn't exactly food time just yet. Also, what's really good, the uh, dwarf hair grass down the foreground here. Hang on, let me just, this is going to require some skill. Right, there we go. It's starting to send out the runners, which you can see in this part here of the sand. That's obviously not what I planted, so that's a really good sign as well. Underneath that sand there, there isn't anything sort of nutrient-wise, but we've put so much in the background areas that's all sort of piled up that it all gets around the whole system, if you like, and the plants can feed off it anywhere. The moss we've planted in the background there, look, that's growing in really well. I'm going to cut that back though, I think, and I think it'd be a good idea to add some more down here just to get that sort of extra greenness. The Corys, look, again doing really well there was some worry from you guys that there'd be some aggression towards them but they don't seem to be causing any kind of problem at all. look at the eggs on that amano that female they're going to be everywhere soon uh, the shrimpless won't survive they'll probably get eaten up by the fish or you know just die anyway in the water so, yeah i think this is a really good example of what can be achieved with just a small little two foot tank i think this is about 70 liters which is around 20 us gallons so a really good size for a couple of feature fish and then you know the whole ecosystem around them and that is exactly why i wanted to do a similar sort of thing in a tank below with another species it's just really interesting i find these kind of tanks like really exciting to come and and take a closer look at Okay, everything's looking great so far. That is like the detailed rocks I've put there, those sort of gray slaty stones. And then I've got a finer version of that to go in the foreground. So it sort of grades back into these awesome cliffs. Are they cliffs? I don't, I don't know, whatever they are. It kind of looks apocalyptic, doesn't it? But it won't do by the time we get all our plants in with that nice background, the water, oh, it's gonna look great. So now that all of our rocks are in place, we can start to build up that back area on the left-hand side over there, you know what the left hand side is and the right hand side so that we got more of a sort of u shape I'm, I'm exaggerating the size of it with my finger but it needs to sort of peek over there and 
over there and that means when we do our planting we'll get you know some good stems already growing above this area and they won't get too long if compact stems get too long the bottom start to sort of not rot but they the leaves come off they don't look good so you want to try and keep them you know about six seven inches long at the maximum i'd say Right then, there we go. It doesn't look like insane at the moment, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not saying it does, but all these areas just add loads and loads of detail. And when we plant into those, it sort of breaks them up. But you can see I've sort of pushed some of the loose sand over the closest areas to us and left that middle section clear. I think that works really well and it kind of merges the sand and the gravels all together nicely. So what I wanna do is probably do like tufts of hair grass and things like that in the foreground, loads of small detailed plants in the, in the foreground, and then have all the stems and everything like that all sprouting out each side and some more greenery in the middle, but I, I really don't know yet. I, I don't plan too much. I just have an overall feel for what I wanna do. And then I just go with it and adjust as you go along to what looks good or looks good in your eyes anyway. That's the most important thing. And as planned, look, I've still managed to retain those dark crevices in between all the rocks that the crebensis will be able to sort of dig out and make little caves in little areas that they can produce babies hopefully hopefully i mean that would be so insane wouldn't it to just come in here one day and there's babies everywhere i'm not going to be putting out anything else in the tank other than the crebensis and the cleanup crew and, and stuff that won't really disturb the baby so this will be their tank for sure and it's going to look so so good still unsure about the blue background but that's because we haven't got any greenery or anything you're not going to see a massive amount of it you see so you probably only see a v in the middle that white thing you can see there that won't be there either once the water comes in <laughs> it's just part of the camera settings don't worry about it it's not interesting at all don't know why i even said it <laughs> but you can see these rocks look strong strata 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 i don't normally go with the strata and just sort of chuck it in but because of the shape of these rocks it lended themselves perfectly be able to do it they're all pointed like a central focal point here um, i don't know if that's right or if that follows any sort of composition rules all i know is i thought it looked cool and that's what i like to do guys you know that don't you i just do what i like and just hopefully it works out so far so good mm -hmm. 